Hello, this is Rock Paper Shotgun and you are watching the Resident Evil 2 Remake from Capcom. It's coming to PC, but I'm playing on the PS4 Pro, so don't be alarmed if you see some PlayStation button presses appearing on screen. Of course, it's hard to be panicked by a button icon when there's so much other horrible stuff going on. This is Leon Kennedy's first day on the job, and instead of shaking all the hands of his new colleagues, he's having to shoot them clean off. I want to talk about 8 features I love in the Resident Evil 2 remake, and zombie gore seems like the best place to start. A key idea of survival horror games is making every bullet count, and Resident Evil 2 hammers this idea home by really showing the damage every bullet can do. Shoot a zombie in the head and you can leave great gaping wounds in their eye cavities, or chip away entire chunks of the skull, revealing the glistening brains inside. These aren't the Ganados of Resident Evil 4, where one well-timed shot would splatter a head like a watermelon. No, these mugs will keep absorbing bullets until they're fully pulped and reduced to nothing more than a pile of dog food slurping away atop a bloodied neck. Shooting limbs is even better. Hit a zombie on the elbow and you can detach their entire arm. It swings from fleshy sinew for a second before falling to the ground, followed by a delicious spurt of strawberry jam. It's the way that the arm swings for that brief moment of time that really freaks me out. You can really feel the weight of the hand slowly tearing at the connecting tissue. Legs will also come off if you target the knee. This has the obvious benefit of dropping old zombos to the floor, but it doesn't mean they won't drag themselves after you. It's actually amazing how many bits of a zombie you can remove and still have it come after you. This big fella here manages to carry on without arms or a leg. I mean, Leon is a tasty looking snack, but that's true dedication to the munching cause. The only downside to all this gore, if it has a downside, is that it's really tempting to waste bullets on needless limb shots, just to watch the comically gory after effects. When I encountered this poor chap impaled on a ceiling pipe, I couldn't resist testing out the new damage physics. I really hope this indiscretion doesn't mean Leon fails his probationary period. Of course, you can't talk gore in Resident Evil 2 without mentioning the magnificent shotgun. If the pistol is about pecking away at flimsy limp joints, the shotgun is about turning zombies inside out. One trip to the locker room, with the correct keycard pilfered from a nearby desk, and you've got this noisy toy to play with. It's a hilariously messy weapon, filling the screen with such a splattering of red that it can take a second or two to work out how much damage you actually did. I mean, there's a whole lot of holes in this guy, but did I actually hit anything vital? The spray of bullets means taking heads clean off can be tricky. It strikes me as a better tool for the claustrophobic corridors, where zombies are forced to film a neat orderly queue if they want to reach Leon. Of course, within a time-limited demo, I wasn't too precious about who I used this on. I just wanted to get some lovely footage of people turning into jam. So here it is. A quick shout out for the combat knife that lovely Marvin hands to Leon when you first meet him. The knife serves its usual purpose of letting you take on single zombies without wasting ammo, and combined with that new limb damage it can be ultra effective. Years of Sunday roast carving experience has made me a whiz at this game. The knife can also be used as a last resort to escape a zombie's clutches. Burying the dagger into your attacker's chest is a great way to keep your neck chomp free. Well, it is if you don't mess up like I did here, but I did lose the knife afterwards. It can be retrieved from the zombie's corpse, or second corpse, re-corpse, I don't know, but there's no guarantee you can actually retrieve it, making it a bit of a gamble. Shit! If all of this talk of vaporising zombies sounds like overkill, then you've yet to meet Resident Evil 2 zombies. These blighters are in real need of overkilling. Just because they drop to the ground, or comically flop under a nearby desk in this example, doesn't mean they're going to stay down for good. The revamped undead are prone to climbing back up, mainly when you've got your back turned to them, leading to lots of nasty surprises. When this one got back on his feet, I actually thought the game was reintroducing the horrifying Crimson Head zombies from the Resident Evil 1 remake. Thankfully, his head was just covered in blood, where I had already shot it five times before. Not only can they jump up, but they will also follow you through doors. Back in the original game, you could always rely on a loading screen to keep zombies penned in. The fact that the corridors are much 
much thinner in the remake also means it's easier for them to grab Leon and chow down on his neck. Back in 1998, you were encouraged to leg it past your shambling attackers, but such tricks are less likely to work now. Zombies also like to jump through windows, though you can actually hold them at bay by using wooden barricades to reinforce the glass. Now, I didn't actually realise this before I spent several minutes shooting the glass trying to get the zombies outside. I'll try and play more carefully in the final game. On paper, the idea of remaking a haunted house seems flawed. If you know where the scares are, you'll easily shrug them off. What Capcom choose to do is to take your memories of those classic moments and play them against you. The producers promise that the game will deliver all the ingredients you remember, but not necessarily in the way you remember them. Take the first encounter with the liquor. Back in 1998, you'll recall seeing it flash by this window. 20 years later, this is just a perfectly nice window that you don't have to scream at. It's not that the liquor has forgotten about you, he's now been moved upstairs where it can spook veterans and newcomers alike. This rug pulling effect is most keenly felt when you enter the corridor where that long tongued freak first dropped down. <sighs> I felt myself tense up, waiting for a horrible surprise. When the liquor didn't pounce on me, I was left in a weird headspace, half wondering if they'd chopped it entirely, half expecting to find it round the next corner instead. It's a very effective trick. Another important addition. Resident Evil 2 Remake has toilets, and the original game didn't. The producers are trying to keep the locations true to how you remember them, but with an extra hint of realism. Otherwise you'd spend the whole game thinking, where do the cops go to the toilet, instead of focusing on going, huh, and huh, at various things jumping out. That said, would a zombie outbreak really cause a toilet to overflow like this? Maybe someone emptied their bowels at the pure horror of it all. I guess it's a mystery to be solved in the final game. I've got a real soft spot for classic Resident Evil puzzles. You know, collecting arcane emblems and jewels and slotting them into obvious holes to open up secret doors. Right from the off, you can tell that Resident Evil 2's remake isn't dropping this approach. In the police station entrance hall, you still find the fountain that eventually reveals a secret door to unknown terrors below. But the remake is also trying to ground some of its puzzles. Take this point in the demo, for example, where we encounter Elliot. Well, technically we encounter half of him. Sorry about that, Elliot. He drops a notebook that sends Leon hunting for three emblems for the fountain, each one locked in a statue with a passcode. Okay, so looking at a notebook to crack a lock isn't massively complicated, but it feels a bit more lived in than simple fetch quests. Likewise, when we finally reach Leon's new office, we find it set up for a surprise welcome party complete with a new desk puzzle designed to help Leon to get to know the names of his new colleagues. There's not much need for those names now, I mean, unless you want to put a name to the decayed face, but picking out initials from everyone's name tags unlocks the desk and earns you a magazine upgrade for your pistol. Again, it's not gonna get you into Mensa, but it feels like you're interacting with the world in a more meaningful way. As much as the game is a love letter to Resident Evil 2, it owes a considerable debt to Resident Evil 7. Obviously it's made in the same RE engine, though without the murky post-processing effects that gave 7 that feel of found footage. This is a far cleaner looking world if you ignore the obvious blood and filth, but the hazy lighting and detailed props give Raccoon City Police Department a similar lived in feel. Despite the obvious perspective shift, the reuse of 7's interface for fast inventory management makes this feel like a very familiar game. Where it feels most like Seven is in the more organic use of items to reach new areas of the landscape. I mean, yes, there's still that collection of daft symbolic keys, as if a police station would ever build door locks based on card suits, but it has some of Seven's more do-it-yourself vibe, such as needing bolt cutters to chop through chain doors, or using a combat knife to hack away at a taped up door lock. Presumably you can't pick at the tape because Leon chewed his fingernails down in fear. Elsewhere we find steam vents that need a valve to gain access to a bathroom, 
C4 that requires a detonator, a slightly reworked version of a puzzle in the original Resi 2, and missing keys that prevent Leon from opening the lockers in the evidence room. One of my favourite things in Resident Evil 7 was trying to juggle limited inventory space so I had enough guns and herbs to keep myself alive, but enough space to carry all those doodads to progress through the Baker Mansion. It's like a very stressful point and click adventure, and it repeats the trick here. There's also the return of Resident Evil 7's ammo crafting system, although fans will remember that you could make bullets in Resident Evil 3, so collecting gunpowder around Raccoon City Police Station won't feel that unusual. Of course, we've only just scratched the festering surface of Resident Evil 2. Even in this 20 minute demo, we've found about 15 doors we can't open, and there's that liquor encounter yet to happen. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of the first demo, and hopefully we'll have more on the game from Gamescom in late August, so why not subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun so you don't miss any more of our Resident Evil 2 coverage. If you have any questions about the game, do pop them in the comments, and I'll do my very best to answer them. We'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye for now!